Hello everyone, welcome back to this YouTube channel, The Immigration Gurus. This is Tender Grover, Resource Quality as Motel Canada. So in this video, we are going to discuss about SOPs. Yes, SOP is really a great topic. Everything revolves around uh, SOPs. Whenever we talk about Canada study visa, visitor visa, any visa, any spouse, open work permit, or any visa, we need to attach SOP. So in this video, I'm particularly going to discuss about Canada study visa applications and SOP, but this applies to other applications as well, uh, any, any Canada visa application, because SOP is kind of the core of everything, but there are so many myths about it. There are so many misconceptions about it. So I'm going to discuss so many things like length of SOP while reapplication can be used the same SOP. What is letter of exclamation? Should we attach it differently? How it is attached? Whether we can uh, use the same SOP in reapplication? How to judge whether our SOP is good or not? Uh, is a SOP everything? So we are go going to discuss so many things about SOP in this video. I have already made a video about SOP. What kind of uh, sections should be there in SOP? So uh, that video is, I guess, uh, how to get study visa with gap or experience. So you can uh, check it in uh, my YouTube channel. So uh, for the content of SOP, but uh, how we can use SOP and uh, these misconceptions, I'm going to discuss in this video. So must watch this video till the end. So first part is, can we use the same SOP, which is written by someone else? Can we just copy paste and uh, use it as well? Uh, so answer is a bit complicated, but uh, yes, you can use the same content which is written by someone else. And you can also use the same content for your uh, application as well. Given that you are using it correctly uh, with your own details and also uh, your program background, everything should be same. So here, uh, why it is complicated or why it is complex. Uh, so one thing is someone is applying for some uh, program. So someone is having some kind of educational background, some experience, and then uh, uh, choosing some program. Even if everything is same, and even if that person has good visa with that particular program and SOP and documentation, so whatever he has done, even if you are doing everything same, still you can get refusal. You can get visa as well, but you can get refusal as well. Because one thing is different in the entire process, that is visa officer. So if visa officer, uh, previous visa officer for your friend, if he liked everything, the program choice, uh, SOP and everything, uh, so he he found that everything is justified and he found everything well and luck was also in favor. So why luck? I am clearing it in a in a minute. Uh, if uh, luck is also in favor and he got visa, but for for when it came to your application, that time uh, uh, luck was not in favor. Visa officer is kind of uh, uh, he was not in good mood and uh, uh, or that day the quota of the visas he could uh, grant the quota was over and you got refusal unnecessarily. It can also happen. So even though you did everything same, you had the same profile, same uh, uh, program chose, uh, you chose the same program, same SOP, same kind of documentation, but due to some luck, visa officer or external factors, uh, which are not controlled by you, in that case, uh, everything, even after doing everything same, uh, you can still get refusal. But you can keep reapplying until unless you get your visa given that everything is correct. So if your friend did everything right, and if, if it is really well proven that with this particular kind, kind of profile, this program works well, this program and this college and university works well, in that case, you can reapply and you can get visa as well. So uh, you can just copy and paste the SOP of your friend with your information, with your additional information. For example, age of your parents, uh, can be different from your uh, friend's uh, age. So change the information as per uh, uh, as per uh, your personal information. And also your job, job title can be a little bit different from uh, your friend's job title. And you can majorly carry the same kind of uh, SOP structure and you can get visa as well. So uh, it is a bit complicated in a way that you don't know whether everything is right, whether everything, whatever is done by your friend is correct, is right. So if if it is actually right, uh, in that case, you can use it similarly. You can use the uh, use everything similarly. Same kind of program, college, university, everything. And uh, you can get visa as well. So you can follow the same steps, same SOP. Copying and pasting your SOP doesn't uh, create any issue. You can just do it. If uh, that is the case, in that case, no consultant should get second visa. Because after first visa, second visa uh, is going to have the content of the previous SOP as well. 
and in that case second application should not be accepted and it is not a scenario because these are not research papers it is it can't be a scenario where the entire content is different in all the applications so i have hundreds of application i cannot write all the sops separately it is not possible for any consultant to do and it it is not possible for you as well so uh, this uh, the concept of unique sop doesn't make any sense and they don't track it word to word that uh, you copied it from somewhere because most of the SOPs are copied, but it should make sense for your profile and you should get visa with that. So you can copy and paste SOP and get visa as well, given that everything is actually right. Second question is, uh, uh, can you change the SOP after getting a refusal? So uh, the answer is yes. Yes and no, it depends on you. So uh, I always change SOP, I always change SOP if Previous application was not through me. So whenever I reapply for application where the previous application was not through me, I don't even check what was written in previous SOP. I just get the profile. I just take the profile. I just um, uh, build the profile in the way of my SOP, which is going to suit my SOP, my way of writing SOP. And I attach the documentation as well, which suit uh, the way I attach the documents. So I rebuild everything in terms of SOP and documentation, and I do not see or I do not check any SOP which is written by any previous consultant or by student himself or herself. So I do not follow anything what is whatever is submitted earlier in the previous SOP because visa officers also, uh, they don't have sources or they don't have time to check the previous applications. Yes, they get to know that you have uh, previous refusals, but they don't check your previous SOPs. So for example, in previous SOP, you applied for some, some random program, maybe business management, and you said that, that I want to become a business manager. This time you are applying for project management and you said that I want to become a project manager. Okay, in both sense, both are fine. We need to justify why you are changing your program. That's a different story, but everything is changed now. Previously, you said you want to become business manager. Now you are saying that you want to become project manager. So the entire SOP changes according to that. So I change everything in terms of prospect of returning home, bona fide studentship, summary, everything. I change everything. I do not follow whatever you have written in your previous SOP. And uh, I just write SOP on my own. So uh, you can change everything in the SOP. But when I reapply for my own cases, where I applied earlier by myself, and they got refusal from me, and now I am reapplying. In that case, I use the same SOP structure and same uh, uh, kind of information in that. Because... If everything is correct, there is no point changing the SOP again and again, just for uh, for the sake of making changes. So I do not change anything in the SOP. Letter of explanation, there will be a justification in that. That's a different thing. But in SOP, the major part of thing uh, of the SOP, it remains same. Your bona fide stewardship, financial ability, uh, your prospect of returning home, uh, learning ability, all those things, all those sections, major sections, details, everything remains same. Uh, just the financial thing, whatever is updated, I update those things. But in SOP, nothing changes. So uh, I, I guess it is now clear if your SOP is correct, in that case, no need to change. If your SOP is incorrect, which I believe that I don't use previous SOPs, uh, I write on, on my own. So in that case, I change everything. So both things can be done depending upon, uh, depending upon your uh, intelligence, whether your SOP is right or wrong, you can use the same SOP again as well. Next question is uh, in reapply, uh, whether to attach letter of explanation or to attach SOP or to attach both, how it goes. So I don't know how people do it, but the way I do it, I write letter of explanation on top, which includes the entire justification for the refusal. It actually includes everything, justification about everything because uh, you are a refusal letter or case notes. They don't explain why your visa got refused. We need to understand uh, whether there is any problem, whether there is no problem. So that is, as per our experience, we need to understand whether is it, there is any uh, problem or not. And justification cannot be based on just uh, just one line written uh, in your refusal letter, which is uh, your stay is inconsistent or something like that. So uh, these are just copy pasted lines and we cannot just uh, follow these lines to justify one point only. So my justification is complete and it includes everything everything in the SOP that this is my justification. Whatever you feel that the reason of refusal, you have justification for that. So my letter of explanation uh, is on top and then my SOP follows. SOP uh, is uh, actually 
uh, having all the detail of your entire uh, uh, SOP means it, it has all the sections, detail section. So if a uh, visa officer is interested in reading just the summary and justification, go for it. Otherwise, detail is also there. So that is good to go. That is my way of doing it. So uh, SOP is, is always followed by a letter of explanation if there is a refusal case. And after that, SOP starts and then the documentation starts. Uh, length of SOP, uh, there is no criteria for length of SOP and it, it also depends on uh, uh, how many words actually you are writing because if you are using font size 12, 13, 14, in that case, uh, pages can be different. So it should not be the length, it should be the words, but there is no word limit in that. Uh, some people say that it should be really small, some say that it should be uh, really big. I don't know what is the actual good length for, for SOP. Whatever I feel that it is covering the entire content, I use that uh, length of SOP. So usually uh, for mature cases, uh, people with experience, the length of my SOP and explanation combined, it is usually five, five pages. Uh, in some cases uh, where there is no experience, uh, recent pass out cases, there the length is three pages. So usually I'm having this much of length, but again, it depends on how you are uh, writing the information. It is not about the number of pages. So if you are writing just uh, three, four paragraphs in one page, in that case, uh, my content may fit into 10 pages, maybe, because uh, uh, means if I'm using font size 12, in that case, length is going to be different. Number of pages are going to be different. If you are using, uh, using some other uh, font uh, size, then it can be different. So, uh, that, but there is no uh, set criteria for that. Uh, whatever is covering your in, uh, entire information should be a good length for you. Next is, uh, can you use same SOP in the reapplication? I have already answered that. Yes, you can use it. I use it for my reapplications, but I don't use SOPs written by someone else. I don't use SOP of students, or I don't use SOPs uh, written by some other consultants for your previous applications or your first application as well. I use my own SOP. And mostly even after uh, people come to read the uh, SOPs, uh, there are minute changes I, I do in... Uh, uh, SOPs which are really not important. Uh, I never, I have never done any major changes in the SOP uh, with any recommendations. So uh, I actually students couldn't find any of those major things to change. There are slight changes uh, here and there, but uh, mostly it remains same. So I am using same format, but I am uh, whatever I am using, uh, which I which I have built in last two years, and this is the latest format which I feel that it is. Uh, complete, it has all the information, all the justifications, whatever visa officer can, can have concern about. And if the application is assessed, I believe that uh, it is a complete SOP to get you visa. Then judgment of good SOP and documentation. So uh, this comes uh, in front of me again and again that uh, students say that uh, my SOP is really good, my documentation is really good, everything was good, still I got refusal. So what is, what is the criteria of uh, judging that everything is good? So is it like, uh, uh, are we like, means being a kid, uh, we feel that our art is really good. Does it, does it really good? So uh, if, if we are having some standard in that case, we need to see what is the benchmark, what is the standard and with that, where we stand. And I guess uh, people don't have the benchmark or the standard because uh, uh, for, for example, if my SOP is there, I don't share it. So in that case, uh, uh, and whatever SOPs I have read till now, uh, I have found most of the SOPs are not complete or uh, they are not uh, uh, justifying everything. So one major thing which is justified is bona fide studentship. Other parts are missing in most SOPs. So I feel that uh, uh, just assuming that our SOP is complete, documentation is correct and it is appropriate is, is just assumption because uh, most of the students don't have any, any benchmark to check it, whether it is right or wrong, whether it is complete or wrong. Uh, so don't be in an assumption that uh, everything is right. So whenever you say that everything was right in SOP and uh, documentation, still I got refusal. So it is a big claim actually. So you don't even know because you are not handling hundreds of cases. You don't have that much of experience. Uh, you may be handling your case or you, you might have seen one or two more SOPs and that's it. You are 
your uh, sample base is quite small. In that case, your judgment of a right SOP and documentation may be small as well. So uh, don't assume that everything is right. And this assumption can be really dangerous, which is making you feel we are doing everything. We are doing everything correctly. Everything uh, has been done in a right way. Still, we are getting refusal. And why we are getting refusal? Because it may be a bad luck. Yes, that is also possible because your visa might be refused. Even if everything is correct, correct, yes, that is possible. In that case, you can just simply go ahead and reapply and get visa. But if if you have got the chance of getting visa in the assessment and visa officer is not uh, convinced with your SOP, it doesn't have all the information uh, related to prospect of returning home or something, something else. In that case, you have missed actually uh, a chance there. So don't be in an assumption that everything is right. It should be actually right. If it is actually right, then proceed and go ahead. Also, uh, people feel that there is this mis misconception that SOP can do everything. No, that is not everything. Everything starts with the choice of program before SOP, okay? So first is choice of program. Second is choice of college or university. And then here it comes the SOP and documentation. Okay, this is not everything. Everything starts, the core is program. Second is college or university. Third is SOP. Then SOP comes into picture. If you are choosing a wrong program, you are working as a mechanical engineer, engineering, mechanical engineer, and you are choosing a program like hospitality management. What SOP is going to do in that scenario? Your first step is wrong. Okay, so that, that will not work. And many people say that uh, we want to go to Nova Scotia, we chose CBU and we chose uh, supply chain management uh, because we wanted to go to uh, CBU. Do you have profile in supply chain management? No, our profile is in uh, 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 finance. So why supply chain management? Because we wanted to go to CBU. Program choice is wrong. SOP cannot do anything in that case. So SOP is the third step. First step is program, university university or college and then is SOP okay so SOP is not everything it is uh, it has a lot of value but uh, everything starts with program so choose your program correctly then only your SOP is going to help you thank you so much uh, I hope uh, this video is, is informative if so like subscribe and share the video as much as possible see you in